the private banks control the Federal Reserve enough to make sure that whatever it does, it does in a way that doesn't undermine their power so that they can continue. That's why we have collapses every few years and the Federal Reserve comes in and is shocked. <laughs> shocked that this would happen. In 2008 they were shocked. Every time it happens they are shocked. They spend a lot of time, they come up with a new set of regulations which in a few years will show that they don't work and a new set of officials will be shocked. If you actually look at the statements they make, it's stunning. It almost appears that people like Bernanke and Janet Yellen may have read the very statements made by their forebears because what they say is almost the same words. It's un and I don't think they probably did. It's uncanny. But then again it isn't because it's the same story. If you control the banks they work around it. If you come down on them they develop new entities. Shadow banking, dark banking, banking off the books. It, it never stops. New devices, new mechanisms, new markets, new securities. Those of you who follow what happened in 2008 know it's the same story. Well, why am I telling you all of this? Because you're not going to solve this problem by reproducing the same routine of the last hundred years. Another crisis, another thousands and millions of people hurt, and what are we going to do? Every one of these things has been evaded, then weakened, and then dumped. All that's different is the pace at which it's done and given the experience the banking sector has over the last century I'm sure whatever we do now they'll be even faster at getting around it, undermining it and getting rid of it. Don't focus, here's my bottom line, on the Fed. It's, it doesn't really make sense. You're not going to liberate the real economy by dishing the financial sector. They're interdependent on a hundred different levels. And I'm afraid, I don't want to upset anybody, but I'm afraid that the notion that you're going to take a large bank and break it up into a little bank is not going to work either. Because we did have the little banks, you see, and in their interaction they became big banks. So if you make them little again, They'll probably do it again, only quicker because they know what's at stake. Meanwhile, if you really did dismember the American banking system into little banks, they would have a very hard time dealing with the very large banks in the rest of the world and would quickly use that as an excuse why to be allowed to get together again. We've seen it a hundred times, this story. Do we really need to see it again? Or are we finally ready to grow up and say there's a system here that links finance, with production, with goods and services, and that's our problem. How this system works, what the incentives are, and how it makes people behave. Changing the rules, given what we've seen, strikes me as mind-bendingly naive. And so much so that since it's not naive people who think it, it isn't naivete. It's because it's scary to talk about changing a system, isn't it? And it's much more manageable to think about this, you get rid of this person, this politician, this particular rule, that particular institution, this particular sector. Just not the system as it works. But it really is the equivalent of in medical science thinking that if your leg hurts, we'll just cut it off. <laughs> this isn't, uh, it makes a certain sense, but it's a very dangerous way uh, of thinking.